No sooner did he hear these words, Gilead away did turn, to fit his sloop and set his sails, his lady's love to earn. He set his course along Le Bong and through the rocks steered true. A kid a more, a ghastly saw, a man admired the view. For there the waves had worn some steps up to a polished seat, but not for little was that throne known as the Horn of the Beast. The breakers there burst like banshees upon the water's rise. At times the ocean is as fatal as a woman's eyes. He waved, he wailed, then closely sailed, as the tide did creep, and at the rock his fears confirmed, the man was fast asleep. He took the stranger's foot, then shook and woke him with the shock. Now climb aboard, cried Gilliatt, or perish on this rock. Aboard the sloop, the black-clad man explained he was a priest, but new arrived who had not known the dangers of the beast. At dock, he said, you saved my life, handing over a Bible. They bid farewell, not in the least suspecting they were rivals. His good deed done by set of sun, the Frenchman was back at sea, tacking toward Les Douvres rocks to answer Lettieri's plea. At dawn against the horizon, a majestic H did rise. The pillars held Durand aloft, as if boasting of their prize. In breaking light, the sloop drew close, beneath the pillar's height. The rocks were wet as wrestlers who were still sweated from a fight. Those sides that rose so dark and steep now gleamed like moonlit armour. How could he bring the engine down, yet manage not to harm her? And where had Captain Clubbin gone, the skipper of Durand? who refused to leave the steamer till he brought her back to land. The crew and all aboard Durand, to lifeboat he had banished, but left alone upon those rocks, by morning he had vanished. None yet suspected the skipper had been seduced by sin, none knew he'd cast aside virtue as snakes do shed their skin. The Frenchman turned his thoughts towards his shelter and his mooring, for though the wind was breathing soft, soon it could be roaring. He gazed along the chain of rocks, lay douvre to the man. The man stood like a citadel, its size gave him a plan. Beneath that hulk of granite hue, there stretched a sort of creek. He steered his sloop inside its gate, his harbour there to seek. His sloop safe moored, the sun had soared, the tide was now full low. Gazing from man to douve, his fears began to grow. Between the two, the smaller rocks did form a corridor, divided by the surf and squall, as sharp as tooth and claw. No time to lose, he could not choose his place to lay his head. If he must labour day and night, lay douves must be his bed. He packed his sack upon his back and hopped from rock to rock. Arriving there, he climbed to reach the steamer's grisly dock. The hull was split, the planks all ripped, each gust a tremor sent. But paddles, chain, and engine hole, the funnel not even bent. The sea had kept the ship alive, as might a cat a mouse. Below it washed across red rocks like blood in a slaughterhouse. He could not sleep aboard Durand for fear that she would plummet. His home must be the plateau on the greater Douve summit. Its glossy sides too smooth to scale and slippery as soap, he thrust his hopes on the trusty sling and grasp of his rope. His rope he threw, the aim was true, up flew the grappling hook, Two times it scratched and slipped, the third it latched inside a nook. Hand over hand he hauled himself atop the precipice, as far below him the foam did seize a foot of the abyss. A bed once found inside a niche, his problems both were solved. He lay awake and watched above, the darkened sky revolved. The circling bird, returning world, a halo thick as night, denied their nests upon the peak to the man they did alight. The squawking chorus there denounced the impostor on their rock. In weeks to come, each conference his task would seem to mock. 
Next day, in skips, from stone to ship, he stripped the reefs and deck. Iron, wood, cordage and canvas, all salvaged from the wreck. The next, he claimed among the rocks a natural forge and store. This gusty tunnel let him work his instruments of war. Chisel, hatchet, hammer and saw, he wielded each in turn. Repairing cables, pulleys, chains, to the forges hiss and burn. He slept upon the Douve's peak, he worked upon Durand, and days did ebb and flow to weeks far from the sight of land. As sky did beat from sun to moon, he lived as in a dream. He struck his hammer in the clouds, his tools like arms did seem. He quenched his thirst along with birds, he sought his food in caves. His ceaseless labour blended with the never-ending waves. His only comfort were the words within the stranger's gift. At dusk each day he read the book and felt his spirits lift. In darkest days began the priest. His word shines as the sun. Then listen on, replied the voice, for darker were to come. The paddles from the steamer once all labelled, boxed and stowed. The grandest task remained, just how to bear the engine's load. Within the hull above it lay, between those dragon's teeth. His plan was simple, catching it, his sloop placed underneath. Thus his pulleys, cables and chains he strung between the rocks. From powerful timber beams up high, each braced for sudden shocks. Round the engine wrapped the chains, through holes cut in the boards. The wreck suspended in the air, as if by slender cords. The day had come, the hour was nigh, the tide was rising high. Full moon would draw the sea in reach of where Durand did lie. Between the rocks, beneath the wreck, he steered his broad-beamed boat. The sloop looked like a wooden shoe, on rising tide afloat. A pair of anchors held her fast, as hour by hour she rose, until ten feet below the ship, his moment the Frenchman chose. Up the rocks, a rope in his mouth, a hammer in his hand, he sprang about like a wild goat at home in native lands. Around Durand he tested chains, the timbers and the cables. Crack! One mighty blow broke the link that held the engine stable. As timbers creaked and cables groaned, he grasped the flailing chain and eyed the engines through the keel descend against the strain. Without a hitch, without a slip, the engines left the wreck, descending at his hand's command towards the sloop's wide deck. He let the chain out, inch by inch, the cables held secure. The beams above still bore the brunt, below the tide rose more. <laughs> 